So today we're gonna talk about booze, uh, we're gonna talk about alcohol and we're gonna talk about the health benefits and or uh, what you're basically destroying with consuming too much of it and how much we should consume and all these things because um, a very important thing I guess, you know, a lot of people are consuming uh, just moderate to high amounts of alcohol, maybe on a daily basis, maybe on a weekly basis and whatnot. So there's definitely some things to consider and I think it is a, a very interesting topic. Um, yeah. Just uh, very interesting. So how bad is alcohol really? And all the uh, the sites and all these um, articles that I'm having in front of me are going to be down in the description. So if you want to check it out on your own, just because you might be faster or something else, please do that. I think they are uh, quite good. The sources might be also relatively reliable. I think even though saying the healthiest types of alcohol ranked by functional medicine expert is always nice, you know, that they say like, yeah, you know, this is an expert. <laughs> But who knows if this fucking is if this is a real um, expert. But yeah, anyway. So how bad is alcohol really? When alcohol intake becomes severe, it can lead to an increased risk for life. Uh, liver disease, cancer, diabetes, neurological complications, bone damage, and many more inflammation-related conditions, according to the Mayo Clinic. And there's also an article by the Mayo Clinic. Um, I've went through it once, I guess, already, so I've excluded it. Uh, but yeah. And the research on alcohol intake is very mixed. Some studies show that even very small amounts of alcohol can increase your risk for certain illnesses. For example, a study published by the American Institute for Cancer, research showed that just one drink a day could increase a person's risk for breast cancer. Another study published in the British Medical Journal also showed that even moderate amounts of alcohol can affect your memory. Meanwhile, other studies like this one published in 2015... Um, say that mild or moderate amounts of certain types of alcohol could actually be beneficial to your health. Moderate alcohol consumption is typically defined as up to one drink per day for women and two drinks a day for men. Which is definitely also going to vary, I think. Um, also on your weight quite, you know, because, you know, people that are heavier tends to be able to drink more. But yeah, anyway. How alcohol affects inflammation. When it comes to inflammation, the research is also a bit mixed. For example, a study published in the journal Alcohol and Alcoholism showed that levels of the inflammatory C reactive protein were higher in people who consumed alcohol. Other studies have shown that alcohol increases levels of the endotoxin lipopolysaccharide LPS in the gut, which is known for in inducing inflammation. Finally, people who drink uh, can also develop leaky gut, which can drive widespread inflammation in the body and also in the brain. On the flip side, certain types of alcohol, mainly red wine, have eventually or actually displayed anti-inflammatory properties due to its high concentration of polyphenols. So yeah, my thoughts on alcohol consumption and health. Uh, the least inflammatory options are hard cider, tequila, brandy, conic rum and the red wine because they are grain free. In my practice, I recommend that my patients treat alcohol like sugar. In other words, it is a treat, which is meant to be consumed only occasionally and in true moderation. The way I see it, there's no doubt that alcohol can be inflammatory, mostly due to the burden that it puts on your GI tract and liver, which houses your body's detoxification system. Not to mention alcohol can affect your blood sugar, cause poor sleep and lead you to indulge in processed and sugar-filled foods, foods that no doubt contribute to inflammation. Yeah. So, so actually think about that. You know, I think it is actually a very wise thing to do to put this into perspective in terms of, um, well, yeah, you know what? There is also food that is fucking you. So, so think about that. You know, I do think that's um, very important and very sensical to do that. The healthiest types of alcohol ranked. And um, I went through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different articles and all of them quite show the exact same ones. So I think we do get a really good overview of what really is uh, relatively healthy. Relatively healthy. So the healthiest types of alcohol ranked. Red wine, which is the first one. Red wine is packed with beneficial antioxidants like uh, rivasterol, which can help improve heart health and even lower inflammatory markers like CRP. That said, it should always be consumed in moderation. And I recommend option for opting for organic sulfate-free brands so you can take full advantage of its properties. If you want to further increase your intake of antioxidants, you can take uh, resveratrol supplements or focus on eating antioxidant rich foods like berries, leafy greens and citrus fruits. The second one is tequila. If Teco Tuesday is your favorite day of the week, you'll be happy to know that this clean liquor made is clean liquor made is a surprisingly healthy choice. Just make sure that you're buying a product that is 100% agave 
and some brands use grains in addition to calf, which can make the tequila more inflammatory. And of course, make sure you're drinking it on the rocks or with soda and a splash of lime instead of mixing it with sugar-filled syrups and or also with juices, I would say. Because, um, yeah, added calories, just period. And the third one is hard cider. If you're craving something sweet and refreshing and hard cider is delicious and naturally gluten-free choice. Cider is made from apples, but it still contains quite a bit of sugar, so always consume in moderation. Expert tip, look for dry cider as this variety, uh, or yeah, variety or variety, will still be a little sweet, but will be lower in overall sugar content. Something to think about. And this is quite it, you know, because all the other ones, uh, yeah, you know, maybe whiskey, most whiskies are made from gluten, uh, containing grains like wheat and barley, but there are also brands that use corn. Whiskey isn't my first choice, but it is one of your favorites. But if it is one of your favorites, I would recommend testing out some gluten-free options. Then there's also vodka, gin, rum, and also champagne, but I don't want to go through them because they're all like semi-good, I don't? But something that I do want to point out in terms of the whole uh, wine thing, and it is indeed part of the Mediterranean diet, which uh, apparently is one of the healthiest you can take advantage of, which is including quite a lot of fruits, quite a lot of uh, whole grains and veggies, but also red wine. But I want to point out, and I'm reading, if you're not a fan of red wine, drinking grape juice made from Concord grapes and eating purple grapes also provide similar heart health benefits. The cardio protection uh, red wine provides is attributed to the intox uh, antioxidants from flavonoids found in the skin of the grapes. The flavonoids reduce the risk of heart disease by lowering bad cholesterol, increasing good cholesterol and re reducing blood clotting. Although red wine can indeed be part of a healthy lifestyle, a fine line determines what amount is considered healthy. The recommended daily intake is one four ounce glass for women and two or one to two four ounce glasses for men. Excessive drinking can become unhealthy and is linked to high blood pressure, cardiovascular conditions and extra calories. So fucking keep that in mind. Uh, you also need to be in good health to enjoy the risk, uh, this perk of the Mediterranean diet. If you have high blood pressure, high triglycerides, pancreatitis, liver disease or cognitive congestive, I'm sorry, heart failure, drinking even moderate amounts of alcohol may worsen your condition. Also, if you take aspirin regularly for heart health, you want to slow down on the drinking. Talk to your health a uh, care provider to see what is right for you. And now let's go to the other ones that I found. Um, yeah, the Business Insider, they actually have one uh, from 2017, blah, 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 blah. The first one they say is tequila, once again. Uh, tequila has numerous health benefits and is lower in calories than men of vodka, or general vodka, I would say. Uh, Adjuvants, the natural sugar found in tequila, are non-digestible, meaning they act like fiber and won't raise your blood sugar levels. Furthermore, the sugar is shown to help lower cholesterol and can help you lose weight. Yep, that is right. Tequila can fit in perfect with a weight loss plan if enjoyed in moderation. And it is very important to point that out and not with some sugary bullshit like they are doing it above there. A spoon tip, the standard tequila shot is one ounce. The second one is red wine. In the end, all wine converts into sugar, uh, which isn't good for you. However, red wine in particular does have some fantastic health benefits. The active compound in red wine, which is polyphenols, revestrol, and quercetin, have been proven to improve overall heart health. Furthermore, research done at the University of Massachusetts, Amherst found that red wine helps slow down the process of glucose, hitting the bloodstream, which stops high spikes of insulin. Spoon tip, the standard size of glass wine is 5 ounces. The third one is rum. Uh, it isn't a popular liquor among students, but it should be for its fabulous health benefits, though. Made from molasses, molasses and other sugarcane byproducts, rum has been proven to enhance mental health in many ways. In moderation, a standard serving can reduce anxiety, for example. And a standard serving of rum is 1.5 ounces. Whiskey. One serving of whiskey contains as many antioxidants as a glass of wine. Try taking a shot of whiskey as your next fighting of preventing cold excuse, which is not, I think, a good idea. Anyway, whiskey also contains allergic acid, which is known for fighting off cancer by absorbing rogue cells. And they also point out champagne and rosé, but I do not necessarily want to get into that. So, yeah. Uh, the next one uh, from Healthista, and it is from 2019. And they say, which is something that's uh, very important in my point of view, as such, alcohol is one of uh, is one question virtually all my clients ask about. Without doubt, it will have an effect on your body and is, and it is very easy to underestimate the number of calories you're drinking, which is definitely the case. And I want to point out, it is going to have an effect on your body. No matter how just in moderation you're drinking or whatnot, it is going to have an effect, period. 
When it comes to alcohol, there is no need to avoid it altogether. However, no alcohol is healthy and it provides zero nutritive, uh, nutritive value. It is all about moderation, control and making good choices. So how to choose your drinks wisely? The first one they say is dry wine. Although originating from fruit, much of the shiga has been converted to alcohol during the fermentation process. With less sugar than beer and far less sugar than flavored red, uh, ready-made alcoholic bottled drinks, which is definitely the case, wine is a much better choice. Red wine with its dark red color contains the antioxidants uh, reservatrol. However, whilst this often justifies the consumption of red wine, buy in mind that I would that you would need, that you would need to consume uh, a very significant amount to provide the antioxidant benefit associated with improved heart health, for example, and they have to consume. So you would need to consume, consume. Well, anyway, and they also point out champagne, uh, vodka, light beers, gin, whiskey, Guinness, Bloody Mary, and some other drinks there. But I also kind of want to focus on the harder ones, kind of. Even though champagne uh, is a sparkling white wine, it can have fewer calories than a glass of wine uh, or white wine or beer. Although it does contain antioxidants, these are limited and of little nutritive value. Uh, champagne cocktail by combining a more dry champagne with orange or grapefruit juice will provide uh, a little vitamin C and will also allow you to drink less alcohol for the same size drink. Vodka and soda. Uh, without a sweet mixer, the combination is sugar-free and therefore lower in calories. There is a misconception that tonic is the same as soda water, but it is in fact a sugar-laden soft drink. Adding a squeeze of lime will provide a refreshing, refreshing twist and also more flavor. And the last one for this article is gin, whiskey, tequila, light rum and neat. Although these are hard spirits, they are without additives and sugar and therefore contain the least calories. Obviously, if you drink the spirit neat or on the rocks, you will avoid any further calorie intake. Otherwise, you need to be careful what you mix it with. And yes, and I would say that this is a important theme and a co an important tip. Therefore, uh, if you know that you're going to drink... Uh, on a particular day, then it makes sense to not eat as much and to not eat as many calories just because you're going to consume quite a lot of calories through what you're just um, consuming, through uh, the um, yeah, through the things that you're just eating, period, and um, oh, what, what you're drinking. So this just really is something to keep in mind and also coming back to the whole thing that it is definitely doing something to your body, yes, uh, it has also something to do with uh, protein synthesis, which just has something to do with building muscle. Uh, I've just watched a video by Jeff Nippert, which is, or who is actually doing very just well um, research-wise and stuff like that. But um, but yeah, uh, it is having effects on it. Um, also because of testosterone, uh, reducing it and um, just... Uh, yes, also having hangover, being dehydrated and all of those things, those just play into just not performing that well and also in general not being able to build muscle that well just because protein synthesis, as I said before, can be reduced up to 37%, which is quite a lot, you know. Uh, but yeah, and now I can't switch. I fucking fuck you. Um, there's another one by MBG, I don't know. Liquor. Uh, liquor tends to be the safest bet as far as calorie count, especially the clear ones. For a healthy cocktail, add soda or tonic. Don't add tonic. A little lemon or lime and you're golden. Tequila is our first choice as it's low in calories, just 64 per shot, and has been found to help balance blood sugar. That's because a natural occurring sugar found in agave plant isn't digestible and can act as a dietary fiber. Can act helping to mitigate blood sugar spikes. And then they also point out gin and vodka. Well, I do actually want to go through gin. It's another good low calorie option that's already traditionally mixed with tonic and a bit of lime. It has a slight higher calorie count than tequila. Uh, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Wine. It's generally accepted that a glass of wine is a healthy option when reaching for a drink given so many wines contain antioxidants. Drink in moderation. Wines are great for complementing meals, both as beverage and also in cooking, uh, which I'm using wines for indeed. You know, they really work well in cooking. Pinot Noir is our top wine choice as far as healthy options go. It may not be as low calories as some other wines, but the added benefit of antioxidants like polyphenols and resveratrol make it a hard healthy choice in moderation. They also point out champagne and they also point out rosé. Yeah, then they also point out beer, but this is not necessarily something that I want to go through just because it is the least 
well or good option and I just know that for not a fact but I just know that. Then another article. The biggest thing to remember is that you're getting the bulk of your calories from the alcohol itself. So try to mix uh, try to pick mixes that don't contribute extra calories or sugars, i.e. nothing that's mixed with cola, nothing that's mixed with other sugary drinks and something like that. The first one once again is tequila with fresh lime juice. They say the calorie count is less than 200. The other ones pointed out something completely different, so I don't know. Margaritas feel indulged for a reason. This standard mixed drink is packed with calories and sugar. A margarita can contain anywhere from 160 to 400 calories, depending on if it's made with fresh juice or a pre-made syrup. Most of the margarita mixes are rich in sugars and calories, blah, 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 blah. But it's still the number one. I don't know <laughs> why. For a lower calorie take on the Mexican-inspired cocktail... Um, Blah, 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 recommends during, uh, drinking tequila with a squeeze of fresh lime juice, the lowest calorie option, or a uh, paloma. It blends in juice rather than a syrup. Keeping calories under 200, she says, using fresh juice instead of a sugary mix will also help you drink it more slowly and enjoy the flavors. To add some calorie-free bubbly to the mix, go for sparkling water or seltzer. The second one is vodka with soda. Um, yeah, if you love the sweetness, uh, cranberry juice lends to drinks you'll love this lightened up version that gets extra tart flavor from lemons. The problem with cranberry juice is, is that it is most often sugared and stuff. But yeah, since alcohol tends to dehydrate you, using soda water is a bonus. The great thing about soda water, other than not adding calories, is that it keeps you hydrated, which is something very important to point out. So, and also it's just not burning everything out of your fucking mouth if you then drink liquor. And the last one, and I'm very fast today, I know, but I actually should be even faster fuck it should be even faster um what do they say actually not that <laughs> i've just <laughs> not that much to be honest um well yeah uh, a shot of hard liquor will it uh, which is typically one ounce and a half has about 96 calories she says and remember that before you start adding in mixes gentle reminder toxic water is not the same as soda water a 12 ounce can has about 124 calories and 32 grams of sugar uh, says Bella. Even if you're not drinking a full can, that's still a lot of sugar and calories where soda water has none. Unfortunately, wine isn't much better calorie-wise. A glass of wine, which is usually a 5.5 ounce pour, has approximately 130 to 440 calories and a 12 ounce light beer will contain anywhere from 120 to 150 calories, depending on what kind it is, says Bella. If ordering a low-calorie alcohol alcoholic drink is your primary concern, go for very simple liquor-based drink like vodka soda with a squeeze of lime, such as Bella. You're not getting the kind of nutritional value that you get from red wine, which is uh, which has antioxidants, but it has fewer calories, she explains. In general, a good rule of thumb when ordering a cocktail is to keep it simple, uh, to keep it simple and ask the bartender to skip the sugary syrup and to go easy on mixes like juice. So yeah, I would say the bottom line of the whole articles are uh, either tequila, or red wine, period. And this is probably also what I'm gonna settle for when I'm uh, gonna drink the next time, I guess. Um, but also just adding water. I don't know if adding water to wine is just going to make it really not good. I would have to just think about that. But I don't like red wine, this is the problem. <laughs> I really hate indeed red wine, but I was just, I'm not the biggest fan of tequila and red wine is even indeed, um, uh, it is, uh, how should I say, it is cheaper, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, I wish you the best self of happiness and all success and also hope that you're going to rise and solve and you're going to be remembered, which basically means your legacy basically means just being a nice person and being remembered as a nice person, which is a pretty fucking cool thing. Three other questions that I have for you are why you are trying to change and what is bothering you the most these three questions are hopefully going to show you your purpose and maybe even a business idea. And the last question that is very important for me that I'm willing to give to you is what could you especially say to another person that is really going to change their life? Because I believe that we all could say something. And with that being said, going to see you the next time. Bye-bye.